for clicking into the video. I'm going to be talking about a miscarriage and this video obviously isn't going to be a cheery one but it's something that I feel compelled to talk about so I'm just going to tell you what happened. Um, so my husband and I found out that we were expecting our second baby in June and um, we were very excited and super excited and um, yeah so I had a miscarriage and tomorrow would have been tomorrow we would have been having our 13 week scan and that's when we would have been able to share the news with everyone um, the miscarriage experience has been really different to anything that I would have expected so I'll just tell you what happened um, so week 10 is 10 weeks is when I had the miscarriage um, I was so basically for two weeks before the t I had had some spotting and cramping but I wasn't very worried about that because that can be really normal in pregnancy. I had that with my son Jed and he was obviously fine. So I didn't really think that much of it. And then, um, then I woke up in the morning and I had like about a teaspoon so of fresher looking blood. And I told my husband that I was a bit concerned. He left he had left for work and I called the doctor and I said I don't know whether to be I don't know what to think of this uh, should I come in and they said yes come in so I had an appointment for that afternoon I went in there she took blood pressure checked my stomach took my temperature said that those sort of signs were positive but that she wanted me to go and get an ultrasound um, when she said that I was, oh sorry, I forgot to say like throughout that morning I'd come home from my son's swimming lesson and there'd been a little bit more bleeding, so like a couple of teaspoons of fresher looking blood and when I, and sorry for the details but I guess I know that if you're, prob probably some people who might be watching this are looking for information or um, like information or like maybe you've had the experience yourself so you're looking for that comfort from others who have been through the same so sorry about the details but but it is what it is um so we yes yeah, so i was when she said go for an ultrasound i was worried but i also was optimistic thinking it might just be one of those things. I know that some ladies do get bleeding throughout pregnancy and everything's okay. So um, it was nearly five o'clock so we had to rush to go and get the ultrasound and yeah, um, in the waiting room I was uncomfortable because I was, if anyone who's had an obstet obstetric ultrasound knows that you have to drink a lot of water beforehand which is really uncomfortable and I was nervous and I was just, I, but I remember saying to my husband, um, like, this is awful, but um, imagine if we get to see our baby today, because it, we didn't have our first scan scheduled for the following, until the following week. So I was obviously feeling optimistic. Um, I think like, having been through a, a healthy pregnancy with, with my son, I just didn't, this totally, I did not see this coming. I knew of the, I knew of the risk of miscarriage. I, I think I knew of the stat that it was one in five. I know it's hard to know in hindsight. Um, and, I, and being, I'm 36 and the risk of miscarriage rises, that is something that I knew and that's one of the reasons why um, we wanted to continue. Sorry, I'm 
it's just hard to like it's hard to talk about it it's one of the reasons why we wanted to to start trying for another baby um so like i knew the risks but i didn't it just feels like something that doesn't happen to you anyway um so we went into the we got called into the room to have the scan and uh, this you know you go into the room it's really dark and this just turned, turned out to be like one of the worst experiences I've ever been through um, she put uh, she did the scan on, on top of my st uh, on top first with the Doppler I think it's called and they um, I didn't know if you'd be able to hear a heartbeat immediately or if that, that was something that you had to like turn the sound on for but it was silent and I sort of tried not to think of anything about that but straight away she said what date did you what was the date of your last period and I said it and she said okay so it should be nearly 10 weeks and um, she said the fetal pole is only measuring at six weeks and um, as, she, as soon as she said that I just knew um, yeah I just knew as soon as she said that that the baby had stopped growing um, but she didn't confirm it or anything she I started crying put my hand over my face like I wasn't looking at the screen uh, but I was looking at her face I was like I remember studying her face to try and read it anyway she kept looking around doing whatever she was doing and then she said go to the bathroom go to the toilet I'll come back and do an internal one so I went to the bathroom and I was just saying please god let our baby be okay please god let our baby be okay I think because nothing had been confirmed then I still had this hope and she I came back in and she did the internal exam and she said that she couldn't find a heartbeat and she said I'll come back and try again but at that point it was just like stretching out the worst news ever and then she kind of just looked around and said she there was no kind of conclusion she didn't sort of say I'm sorry for your loss I'm sorry your baby's has like she kind of just said okay you can put your clothes back on and I'll bring you the images and then she came back in and gave them to us and that was it there was no kind of clo closure on it but we knew and we were just um like okay it was just i can't even describe the feeling it was just like the world had stopped gut punched and heartbroken and just just hot just horrible and we left and kind of went outside and walked a few meters and then just sort of just like doubled over and lost it and yeah anyway um and when we got home my mum was here with Jed and we I was like just not saying anything or just I was just like a robot getting his dinner together and then anyway like later that night I yeah we put Jed to bed and then I kind of just like Lindsay and I held one another and I cried and it's just that like that deep crying from like animal instinct crying from your gut pain so the baby was still in there and I was just crying like my baby my baby I've lost my baby and it was just like still in there it's kind of like I was happy that the, the baby was still in there because I it felt like I got to be with my baby a bit longer 
even though it wasn't alive I just wanted it there and I didn't want to like let go but I felt empty yeah it's really hard to describe um, anyway later that night I had some heavy bleeding which if I'd had earlier that day it might have like clued me in a bit more and the ultrasound might not have been as much of a shock as it was um, and then the next day we went to the hospital and they like we had to it's a clinic that only opens for an hour in the morning for anyone who has like early pregnancy issues so it's quite a depressing room and just waiting and saw some doctors and they said to us that because I only have one scan they and the baby was only measuring at six weeks six weeks is too early to detect a heartbeat and because I'd only had one scan they couldn't officially conclude that it was a miscarriage and they said to us that I had to get another scan in a week and the doctor said to see if the baby has grown and when she said that I was just like shaking my head and um, just, just lost it again and she was like what are you thinking and I said I, w I just wasn't prepared for you to say that I wasn't expecting you to say that we've already sort of pro we're processing what's happened and you putting you um, saying that is like giving me a false hope that the baby's going to grow when obviously if it's measuring six weeks when I was ten weeks so I had what is called a missed miscarriage, which is where the baby stops growing, but your body doesn't, but your body continues on acting as though it's pregnant. And like, I don't know if, I don't know why that happens. Maybe I just, wanted it so much and didn't want it to be real I was just my body wanted my body wanted to be pregnant I don't know why it happened but basically it had been four weeks and the baby and you say your baby because it is your baby I think before this happened like obviously I had such empathy for anyone who lost their baby through miscarriage no matter what stage because as soon as you find out you're pregnant you I know this isn't the case for everyone but you feel connected you're that little person's mum they're gonna be a human they're gonna look a certain way and have a certain personality and you're going to look after them and they're real already and they are just a tiny little person and so they're your baby no matter how small so yeah um anyway late, later that morning when we got home yeah, so they couldn't do like a DNC, which is where they use an instrument to like scrape out the inside of your uterus to get out the the fetus and the other products of conception, which is what they call it. Um, they couldn't do that because they couldn't officially say that it was a miscarriage. Um, but later that morning when I got home, I actually like, I needed to go to the bathroom and when I went um, the just my camera just stopped recording but yeah the the gestational sac came out I could feel something coming out that felt strange it was a lot bigger it was like it was like this big and it came out like it didn't hurt or anything but it was sort of just hanging there and I saw it it was huge and I could see like the white matter inside which would have been the baby and like I couldn't make out features or anything like that but I could see through the sack I could, um, so that was uh, totally unexpected 
like when I've thought about people having miscarriages in the past well not that I've thought about it a lot but like if I thought about a miscarriage I would have thought that it was just like you bleed and then that's it obviously depending on how far along you are it will be different but because at six weeks the baby's only like so tiny I was not I was expecting that it would just that I wouldn't probably even notice that it might just come out in a clot so that was totally completely unexpected and the hospital or anything hadn't prepped me for that so I didn't even think about the gestational sac coming out I had no idea it would be that big so that was a really big shock um, but when it happened I, I guess I was in shock because I didn't have like a reaction like I didn't have much of a reaction I and then for the next week or so I just kept seeing that image over and over in my mind and after it happened like it fell into the toilet and I was there's nothing I could do about that it, it just happened but I was so devastated and guilty afterwards that it had just fallen into the toilet I was like this is my baby this is like the soul of a little person and how could that have been like I don't know what I would have done with it if I would have caught it or something but I just like felt the... and then like I was reading on a, a forum about miscarriage and it said that when they do the DNCs at the hospital at this particular hospital that I read about they cremated the remains and spread them on a rose garden and when I read that I just felt even more horrible that I hadn't been able to like honor the little life that was so that was a very strange experience um I won't go into minute detail about the next few weeks but over about the course of like two and a half weeks it went on for for me so because I didn't have a DNC it just kept coming out like that it was a Tuesday where the main part came out and then on Friday I passed another huge clot which I, which I believe was the placenta um, so this was all really unexpected stuff but yeah and but in a way like I remember like I thought afterwards it's like I'm actually glad that it came out naturally because I think there was I think it was um was a sort of certain amount of sort of like closure in my body taking care of it and if it had happened in the hospital it might have been more traumatizing to be like because you you go under general anesthetic and I think it would have felt really like maybe more traumatizing so anyway I had to go back to the hospital I had to have another ultrasound to check that everything had come out and the ultrasound showed that there was still something in there they call it products of conception which I later got told by a doctor that it would be something like the vessels where the placenta had been connected to um, my uterus so anyway there was still stuff in there so I had to go back to the hospital and they recommended taking this pill called misoprostol and it's meant to make your body contract to and it can be really really painful basically like it causes contractions which I had had some of those nothing like pregnancy labor but I had had someone some before the that placenta came out um, I have read that since we found out that some women get extremely bad pain to pass like the miscarriage to have through the miscarriage so I'm grateful that I didn't have that um, the misoprostol did nothing for me it caused minor cramping but nothing much happened um, so I had to go back to the hospital for a third time that was just on Friday just gone and they said at this point um, probably just wait until your period comes back and that will 
get rid of everything and if I like I can have a an ultrasound after that just to make sure that everything has come out um, I'm able to talk about this in a more sort of detached way now because I've been able to process um, but for them you know after it happened I just felt like being in my own little bubble um, I didn't want to see anybody I only wanted to see my husband I just I just wanted to be like in a safe little family bubble and um, it was just like like a huge sense of loss like I'd said after the actual um, baby came out it was like a sense of emptiness so you go from being pregnant where you know and pregnancy isn't a walk in the park it's quite uncomfortable but there is also a sense of fulfillment and fullness and such happiness um, and contentment and you just to go from that to not being pregnant is was such like a didn't feel just such emptiness and and yeah you you just there's so many, you know getting pregnant in the first place is not even just like the not exactly fun I mean it can be but it's also hard with all the waiting testing and you know all of that stuff so there's the you go through the emotions it's like absolute grief and loss and then frustration at the fact that you have to do it all over again and you've your plans have changed and um the denial denial was crazy like after they told me that at the hospital about have to see if your baby will grow i started thinking crazy things in my head like oh what if what if i was pregnant with twins and um like one has come out but there's another one that they didn't see and that's the, that was a small one without the heartbeat and i'll have another scan and it'll be have grown like i know that sounds crazy but i think that's the that was the like grasping at not wanting to believe what had happened but also like the pregnancy hormones take a month or so to leave your body um so you're still like experiencing all the pregnancy symptoms of the hormones um the tiredness the sick uh, the nausea but you're not pregnant anymore and i think the other overwhelming emotion through it all was just the absolute fear of this happening again and i think like the fear even just three weeks ago was definitely more pronounced than it is even now like now I feel like like I will have hope but I'm gonna be tremendously frightened to go and have the scans and like I didn't have that with Jed because like I said I knew that miscarriage was a thing that happened but um you just don't expect it to happen to you and after you have a miscarriage and you tell some friends about it and you learn that they've had it too and you didn't know it's sort of like this is something that happens quite commonly but there's not a lot of conversation about it and i totally understand that too because why do you want to dwell on something that you just want to sort of move past it I suppose but um the reason that I'm making this video and I'm not 100% sure at this point whether I'm going to share it but the reason I'm making it well there's a few reasons one is because I think there is healing for myself in sharing in talking in not bottling it down I think that when this sort of things happen you, you search for information you search for reasoning you search for other people who it's happened for so that you know that you're understood so that you're not alone in your grief um, 
because I think that there's a certain amount of misunderstanding um, like people might think oh, it wasn't a baby it was just a little ball of cells or how were you that attached to it but you are you are that attached to it, it, it you are so I think there is a little bit of misunderstanding and that's understand that's understandable but in sharing and talking about it hopefully more people can like the more people that share the more people the more the, sorry the better people can understand um yeah so <coughs> they're the reasons for sharing um yeah so i don't really know what else i can add to what i've said um yeah it's been a really humbling experience like it's made me really grateful that we have our son Jed and that we were able to experience a pregnancy in a fairly carefree manner in that we went into each scan with um, sure we were nervous to make sure everything was okay but I feel like moving forward it's going to be just a different kettle of fish with like the degree of anxiety so I'm incredibly grateful that we have our son Jed I'm grateful that we didn't try for a really really long time to fall pregnant with him I'm grateful that we didn't have to go through anything like IVF like a lot of people have to do for then this to happen there's a lot of reasons to be grateful and miscarriage is common and that's really unfortunate because it is such a horrible experience for anybody to have to go through it's just really just brings you to the ground um, but I am doing okay um, you sort of just I think different people experience things differently if we hadn't had a child already I think it would be a lot harder but yeah that, um, I have I think that personally I've got something to put together for the little baby that wasn't to become a baby I wrote a letter for the baby when we found out and when we found out we were pregnant which is what I did for Jed as well I have a little picture from the scan of the fetus and I have a little shirt that I put on Jed when we when I told Lindsay that I was pregnant which has the baby's what the baby's due date was which was the 12th of March and I got a little angel pin for August which is the 13th of August when the, ba I, uh, the baby I, when I passed the baby so um, it's just a little way for me to remember and acknowledge and s sort of process I guess and I just I wrote this little card and it wrote and I wrote on it something that I read which is every soul that comes into this world comes here with a very specific mission when that mission is completed the soul can leave the holiest of souls need so little time here in this world that some never even make it outside the womb others need only their heart to beat once others not even that so that's just something to I hope helps somebody else if you're going through the same thing and if you ha haven't I hope this you never have to experience this but um, thank you for watching 
Okay, so hello. To, so today is Tuesday the 25th of June, in case this becomes important. It's close to four o'clock. I've, I've just put Jed down for a nap and I'm about to take a proper pregnancy test. Um, it's seven days till my expected period, so it's early to test even for this one. Um, but let's just do it. Uh, I've taken a sample, so I'm just going to do this now and I don't know, we'll see what happens. Alright, so fresh test, I'm so nervous, anyway let's just see, alright, one, two, three, four, Four, five, cover it up, and now we wait. This has got to be a riveting video. Alright, so the colour is moving up the test. It's going to be a riveting video if it's a negative. Um, with Jed, I tested positive a week before my period was due on a cheap pregnancy test. Um, all right, I can see one line, which is the test line, and my heart is beating fast. Um, I, I need a, uh, I need a, what do you call these things? Freaking hell, I need a microscope. Okay. Alright. I can see a faint line. It's very, very faint. But it's there. Oh wow. I can't believe I'm pregnant. <laughs> Ugly cry face. Oh. I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna wait to see if it gets a bit darker, but yeah, it's becoming darker. I can't believe I'm pregnant. <laughs> Why am I apologizing to a camera? <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy. It. <laughs> Lindsay gets home in just under two hours and I get to tell him. I'm oh, just so happy. I always, I always wanted children to be close together so that they could be good friends and so Jed can have someone to play with and it this is such I'm so happy. Oh mascara. Um I sh gotta show you the test. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but I'll try. This is going to be very anticlimactic if you can't see it, but can you? It's very faint. Can you see that? I think that's showing now. There you go. Um, 
it took us five or six months to conceive Jed and it was it was hard you know it's hard when you want something so much and waiting month after month and going through that like two week wait and then having to wait a whole other month and this is just such a massive blessing and such it's just so amazing and I'm so grateful first try we started trying two weeks ago and Lindsay's just gonna be so happy and yeah so yeah I'm glad I got to record this and to the little bunch of cells in there it's just so surreal right at the beginning like it's so new it's just, it doesn't feel real but one day there will be a little baby and to that little baby welcome and thank you for choosing me as your mum and I love you already and I'm going to sit keep you safe and warm and happy and look after you for the next nine months that you're in here and just thank you for being in there and yeah I'm going to wrap it up now but this is this is great news I'll show you another shot let me just get this good look I'll go over here see if I can see it a bit more clearly yeah. here we go <laughs>